I recently reviewed the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 with a Xeon processor, and I told you I'd get the Ryzen one in the studio and check it out for benchmarks, and here it is. So let's get right into the benchmarks and not waste any time. And if you're curious about my three months later thoughts or what I think about the Xeon one or even the build quality, I'll link up all those videos at the end of this video and you can check out the full unboxing and, and all those details. So first and foremost, let's jump into this laptop and check out Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core. And as you can see, compared to the Xeon processor, this laptop definitely steps up the game on Cinebench R20 and R23. I really think that Xeon processor is really just behind an evolution. I, I feel like Intel is not catching up as quickly as possible and their Xeon is getting really ignored. They're trying with their core processors, you know, the Intel i7 and the Intel i9, but really if you want this laptop with great performance inside of stuff like Photoshop or inside Premiere Pro, then you're really going to want to go with the Ryzen processor. And not only is it a better performing CPU, but it's also a cheaper laptop by almost $3,000. So it's kind of like a no-brainer, unless you're doing stuff like 3D modeling, and then as you can see on the charts right now, we have Autodesk 3ds Max and Autodesk Maya. And it's not a huge difference in Autodesk 3ds Max or Autodesk Maya, but where we see a big jump in performance for the Xeon processor and that Quadro GPU is gonna be in PTC Creo as well as SolidWorks. In SolidWorks, it's not even a competition. So inside of the Ryzen version, we have the Ryzen 9 5900HX, 32 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 3070, compared to the Xeon processor with an A5000 GPU and 64 gigs of RAM. So it's a lot more expensive of a laptop, but it comes with a lot more advantageous spec out for 3D modeling. Now, some of you may be thinking, Ben, Get with the program. This is Ryzen 5000. Hasn't Ryzen 6000 already come out? And yes, you would be correct. However, I recently spoke with the Asus product manager and she said that there is not a definite release date for the Ryzen 6000 version of this model. However, I will say that according to past experience, I would expect this to come out maybe mid-summer to late summer, uh, according to the product release schedule. So just giving you a little bit of context on why we're still looking at the 5000 version because it's the one that is currently available. Now, as we shift over to After Effects, once again, the Ryzen laptop steps it up, not by a ton, but it's definitely better in performance. And if it's cheaper, you might as well save the money and get the slightly better performance. Really, like I'm saying, that Xeon processor is gonna be the 3D modeling guru, and that A5000 is gonna be the 3D modeling guru architecture and things along those lines. Now, it is substantially more expensive, but you're gonna get a benefit and boost in performance because of it. So the color gamut range, color accuracy, and brightness on this screen is great. You can see the results coming up on the screen now, but the big concern that I've seen people have is the OLED screen. Now, in the past, this has been a strong concern, especially if you're going to be using a TV to display a picture or it's often going to be running a lot with the same image. So to me, I never run the same image on my laptop. And if there is the same image being run all the time, it's my backgrounds. And what you can actually do is just go to your window setting, select a couple different backgrounds and just put them on rotation and it'll rotate your background maybe every hour, every day, every 12 hours, whatever it might be, and you'll curb the concern of the burn-in. But as many creators have been saying, recently I talked to Jared's tech, and he was saying burn-in really isn't a concern for him. Companies have made a lot of advancements since a lot of those concerns to curb the burn-in of these screens. So just wanted to put that out there. If it is a concern to you, feel free to comment below, have some conversation and see where you end up. And if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the different models available for the StudioBook Pro 16, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, as we shift into video editing, you can see the export times between the Xeon processor and the Ryzen processor are very similar, but where we see the biggest difference in performance is going to be with the playback. We only have in the hundreds and even just a hundred drop frames for B-RAW and then about 200 for red footage with the Ryzen CPU. Whereas with the Xeon processor, we have a few hundred with B-RAW, but then we're in the thousands with red footage. So if you want a video editing laptop, the Ryzen version of the Asus StudioBook ProArt 16 is gonna be your pick. Now, as we get into DaVinci Resolve, both have good playback and you can see the export times on the Ryzen version are quite a bit better. So again, if you're a DaVinci Resolve user, the Ryzen is gonna be your pick. 
However, the Ryzen CPU does run hot while exporting 4K footage out of Premiere Pro. On any of the fan modes, you're above 90 degrees Celsius, and the only time we saw it dip below 90 degrees Celsius is when we unplugged the laptop and ran on battery mode, which actually ended up taking slightly longer to export the clip as expected. You have a 50% drop in performance when you unplug your laptop from power. So that is a bit of a negative if you're somebody who cares a lot about thermals. The Xeon processor is gonna be where your money should be. Now, I would say the Intel Core processor will match closely to the Xeon processor as far as thermals are concerned, but I've not been able to test it in my studio personally to know that for a fact. But historically, Intel laptops run slightly cooler than Ryzen laptops, so based on historical data, I could say you could save some money, not go with the Xeon processor, get the i7 processor if cooler thermals are important to you. Historically, the Ryzen 9 5900HX in the Razer Blade 14 was a very hot CPU, and we're seeing that same situation with it in this laptop. Now, the next thing we're gonna move on to is Photoshop, and really both laptops killed it in Photoshop. Over a 1,000 points in the Puget Systems benchmark, and then when you unplug the laptop, you get about a 50% drop in performance, but you're still in the 500s. So when you're on the go, you're still gonna get excellent performance out of these laptops, specifically the Ryzen. Now, concerning battery life, I was actually very impressed. This is a 16-inch laptop with a lot of performance, and it does not have iGPU mode. So all of the battery life tests are being run, with the GPU activated, not pumping a lot while doing, of course, streaming and productivity tasks, but during Photoshop and video editing, the GPU will be in use. So to see this much battery life out of a laptop with this much performance, I was very impressed by. Like I said, I wish they would add iGPU mode like the Republic of Gamers have. You can switch off that GPU and get much better battery life if you're just doing like productivity tasks. Now, for these battery life tests, we're using Passmark, streaming a YouTube video, and then for Photoshop, we're running the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery goes dead. And for video editing, we're running a 4K project on loop until the battery goes dead. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, you're like, you know, I think I wanna get that laptop. There's some availability right now, but it's not always available. So definitely check out the links in the description below. Check the live pricing and availability. Links if you're ready to make a purchase and likes if this video has brought you some value. Here's those other videos. If you wanna know more about this laptop, I'll see you in the next one.